Hello, my name's Leslie Abberton, and this little piece of writing is called If You Had a House, What Food Would You Buy? It had been so long since Vince had experienced that true sense of satisfaction he used to get from sitting with mates, listening to Nirvana or the Foo Fighters with a beer in his hand. Nowadays, the best experience in the world was undoubtedly watching his kids snuggled together, giggling over the latest DVD release. It was the grown-up version of the beer-fuelled music nights. There were bad times, of course, but he mainly remembered the good and the interesting. When he'd first left home, life had been hard. Aged 16 and as useless in the real world as he had been in the family home his dad had evicted him from, he'd lived in a bedsit inhabited also by other creatures. Bean sprout monster insects, white maggots, flies, and an entire organism of green, black and orange stuff which lived on tiles and around the bottom of the windows. He'd no idea of life or of survival. He'd lie on the never-been-washed duvet and dream of the poetry of fish, I swim, therefore I am. He'd wonder if he'd been born into the wrong gender or if he should wash his clothes, ever. He'd look at others effortlessly managing their lives and feel lost, confused, constantly in debt and with no chance of a job any time soon, he hovered round the edges of life and reality. He'd sit with friends while their rock group rehearsed in a foul room above a pub. He couldn't sing or play an instrument and was too physically weak to help them lug their kit up the two flights of stairs, but he sat with them whether or not. After the rehearsal he'd sometimes invite them back to his place, but their uptake on his offer was rare. His furniture was filthy and his cupboards were bare. A friend once caught him wandering aimlessly along the aisles at Quicksave. He'd seemed lost and delusional. The friend, an old schoolmate who'd lost touch voluntarily and intentionally and with a great sense of, well, I might be a screw-up, but at least I'm not Vince, asked him if he was all right. He strongly suspected Vince of being drugged up, so weird was his behaviour. Vince instead asked, If you had a house, what food would you buy? Vince was sincere. Vince was confused. The friend tried to help, asking him what he enjoyed, what he'd eaten at home with his parents, and what he actually enjoyed cooking. The friend already had a house and a family on the way, a job and a place on a night school course. He was going places. But Vince? No. With his friend's assistance, Vince settled for chicken and breadcrumbs. He asked his friend how to cook it. His friend showed him the instructions on the side of the packet. After clarification of the word bake and what the 180 degrees symbol meant, Vince had bought the pack, taken it home, fried the chicken, fallen asleep with the frying pan on and burnt down the large Georgian house he lived in. Seven bedsits gone. Amazingly, nobody was hurt. Not even Vince. He'd got back on his feet again, though. Perhaps there had been a form of catharsis with the fire, but his mind had stopped playing so many tricks on him and he'd started to receive support from social services. He'd found somewhere sheltered and safe to live. He'd learned to cook a little, and things came to him, gradually, gradually, gradually. And then came his adventure at Hastings Private Academy. No, he hadn't turned his life around completely. He wasn't a teacher, as he knew he didn't have the brain power to take the training, but he'd found that he could train his hands to handyman work. And this grand and crumbling public school desperately needed a handyman. The Hastings Virginia Creeper was already turning that beautiful shade of orange-red on the grey stone walls of the school's 500-year-old main building. And an observer who was asked, perhaps about the view or the quality of the schooling at Hastings Private Academy, or even about the architecture and sweeping lawns, would probably refer to the two elements of Hastings that the school was infamous for. The first was the sporting prowess of the pupils, particularly lacrosse and hockey. The second, the lack of quality of the sewerage system and the ancient, unprotected cesspits in the school's ground. Vince looked after the cesspits as best he could. It was just one of his many jobs, and he carried each of them out with great care. He'd been at the school for almost ten years now, and while there had met one of the cleaning ladies, Patty. She was lovely. Not too bright. Not scary bright, anyway. He didn't like girls like that. But sweet and pretty. And best of all, Vince thought, was she was a brilliant cook. He'd never ended up with food poisoning when she cooked breaded chicken. She could be relied upon to make food safe. Patty had just called him. I'm taking the kids to the park, she'd said. 
The one on the other side of town, the one with the big swings. I'll get dinner on the way back. What do you want? Vince loved her for that. The big decisions of life weren't for him. He needed space and time to process options and garner responsibility. I'll leave it up to you, love, he'd replied. You know I'm not much good at that kind of thing. Vince was looking forward to a cuddle up when he got home, a play with the kids, a good meal, a good woman. This was what he was meant for. This was what made him happy. The four of them, their little house, their simple food, and most of all being with somebody who could be trusted not to burn down their home while cooking.